Hey Sagittarius, this is TC, your guiding chariot. Welcome to your second week of your July readings. I hope you guys are all doing well. This is going to be a timeless general reading for all Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Timeless because this message will find you when it's meant to find you, whether it's this July, next July, September, does not matter. Message will be as relevant then as it, as it is the day of filming. Um, my only request, since this is a general reading, take it how it resonates. If there are bits that don't make sense or don't fit your circumstance, do not try to force it. Leave that on the table. Take everything else. All right? So, so oh, hold on one second. So Sagittarius, I'm kind of focusing these particular readings on um, kind of what's going on for us through or now that we're out of eclipse season. We're still in eclipse energy, right? Because we'll have that probably for the rest of the year. Um, usually last, can last up to six months. Um, but we're officially out of season. Sorry if you can hear, there's like a, some type of plane or something going overhead. So it's a little, a little noisy. I hope you can still hear me. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So I kind of wanted to focus uh, this week's reading. Oh, was I drop stuff on the floor. Hello. All right. I kind of wanted to focus this week's reading on kind of what's going on with us now that we're fully out of this eclipse. And for Sagittarius, and this may shift a little bit. Uh, depending on your rising sign, because obviously Sagittarius will fall in a different house or rule a different house, um, depending on your rising. Um, so it may may make sense to watch your rising if it's not Sagittarius. Um, but for most Sagittarius, a lot of these issues are having to do with some level of alignment, but also a level of, um, how do I want to describe this? Kind of like allowing, especially allowing your abundance to come in. Because there is this this idea that is kind of messing with possibly, you know, your own perceived value or your self-worth and really, really owning that you are worth whatever it is you've been desiring. Like you've, you're worth the abundance that's coming in, to, you know, just because of what house this is happening for you. And I will say this doesn't mean your value is changing. It's not like your value is going up or down in this moment. It's really about recognizing what your value is. Because I will say, some of you, especially those of you that end up connecting with this reading, probably have been in a bit of a low point. Doesn't mean that's your normal, but you may have been going through a period where you're starting to doubt some things or starting to question some things that maybe before you never questioned before. That was a lot of befores. <laughs> But it's this energy of kind of really recognizing and owning what your value is and then not doing anything to get in the way of that. You know, because there's like an example of that as we kind of get into our first deck, you know, would be like having this desire for, you know, the perfect guy or the perfect job or, you know, the, the ultimate version of what, what that is. But then thinking like, oh, I could never get someone that cute. Or, oh, I could never get someone that makes that much money. Or, oh, I could never keep someone like that. Or, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to, to work that job or keep that job or, you know, whatever it is. So it's, it's like you're putting out this dream of give me this. And then at the same time, you're like, oh, but I could never handle it. Or, no, is that mine? No, that can't be mine. I'm not, I can't do that. No, there's no way. So that's, that's, that's kind of where I'm getting at. I hope I'm explaining it correctly. Look, I mean, look, now that I'm in your energy, like now I'm questioning myself. Ha <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But that's, oh, all right. Yeah, well, let's take those two. We're gonna, you get two, you lucky ducks. All right, let's see. All right. So we've got Mother Mary, keeper of love and peace. Look at that. Roses have been popping up a lot, too. A couple of the signs got, got some rose symbols. Uh, let go of the need to be right. Choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. So definitely some healing. I would say also a level of kind of compassion for yourself. Maybe forgiveness. And just kind of being nicer to yourself. And not being like, oh, you need to work harder. You need to do this. Oh, you shouldn't have slacked off there. You know, that can be kind of disruptive energy in and of itself. I am going to butcher this name. Jual Cool? I probably said that wrong. 
but dharma unfolding. And dharma is like your purpose, right? It's like your soul purpose. So remember that you are on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. I love it. So big thing with, so well, well, outside of just this card's meaning, dharma itself is kind of always unfolding. That alone is kind of like always a path, like the card talks about. So you're always progressing. You're always kind of discovering more, especially about yourself. Like there's always growth. There's always enlightenment to be had. Like no one ever reaches the final level and be like, I know everything. Like that's, that's never a thing. So more noise. Um, with these two coming out, especially coming out together, yes, you're on a journey. Yes, this is a progression. A lot of a lot of what's going on now, you just kind of have to be kinder to yourself and nicer to yourself and kind of allow what's unfolding. So not only are we talking about allowing your abundance, but just kind of allowing the progression, allowing the steps. Like if it, if it unfolds this way, it unfolds this way and just letting that happen. All right, let's get into the tarot. Oh, Satch, all right. I think we'll do one more. I'm like, I'm not quite there yet. All right, let's see. Look at that. Oh, hey. All right. So, bottom of the deck right now. Well, not right now. It's going to be the bottom of the deck. Two of Pentacles. So, how do we find balance? Where is this flow? Right? Because that's, that's what the two... So, twos generally have a lot to do with making a decision. But the Two of Pentacles is about balance. It's, it's a big juggling act. You know, where do I put my energy? What do I focus on? What do I have time for? But it's very fluid. You kind of have to be willing to do do this with everything you're weighing out. You know, it's not about, yes, the decision needs to be made. Now may not be the exact time to make it. So now you kind of have to feel out and experience the multiple options and just kind of flow and kind of, okay, now I'm going this way. Now I'm going this way. I always describe this as like water in a bottle. So if you had like a plastic water bottle or any water bottle um, that was like half full of water, if you tip, if you tip the, wa the bottle to the left, the water just flows to the left. It doesn't like, oh no, I don't wanna go over there. I'm gonna stay down here. I'm gonna just defy gravity and hover up here. You know, and then same thing, if you tip it back to the right, it just flows to the right. That's, you kinda of wanna be free and flowing in that sense because I think you're in this moment of learning. We're learning where we're going next. We're learning what to do with the present. We're learning more about our own connection to the plans we've laid out. Some of these plans may be shifting for some of you. So first and foremost, we have the Hermit card. Definitely a card of learning, which is why I said that. Um, this is the card for Virgo, so some of you may be dealing with a Virgo. To me, I think it's more about this moment of understanding. It, this is also a symbol of spiritual guidance. So you guys, you guys could be receiving signs and messages. Um, if it if it makes you feel that in your gut, and you're like, oh, this is a thing. It most likely is a thing. Um, and I think a lot of what is kind of being fed to you and these messages that are being sent to you and what you're trying to kind of be led to understand in a way has to do with this shift, with this this next journey. Because I think a lot of you are already thinking about it. You know, one, because we've already had Dharma unfolding come out, you know, in your first your first set of Oracle cards. But there's also an ending here coming with this Ten of Wands. I know this particular deck makes it look a little gruesome, so I'm sorry. You know, it's it looks kind of gnarly. But this is an ending. This is a final, like, last sword, last nail in the coffin, done, shut, by, boo, out. Something... And I will say this, I don't think has happened yet, but I think you're already, you already know wherever you are. So whether this is a relationship, if this is, you know, a career, if this is, maybe this is like a, a, a personal relationship that's not romantic, um, just like a phase of how you live your life, whatever this is, I feel like you already know the ending is coming. Like you can already see it. You already know it has, it has to die, whatever this thing is. So that's where this like, okay, well, if this is ending, even though I know it has to end, I want it to end. What, what, 
what's next? What comes after this? What do I do? Because I've probably been dealing with this for a minute and this has been the normal, but this can no longer be the normal. So what comes after that? We have the Seven of Cups, which again is literally the what comes after that because there's a lot of confusion. You can see there's seven different options and cups in here for you to drink from. You know, which one do we take? What do we do? You do have this beautiful Two of Cups coming out, which is very nice. Uh, the Two of Cups most often speaks to a soul connection. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be for some of you. I will say I don't... I don't get a whole bunch of romantic vibes off of it. And again, I told you a lot of people keep getting roses. You got roses twice already. I don't necessarily think this stands for romance. And it, especially not romance right away. You may, this may be a partner who comes in and may lead to romance. We'll see what the clarifier, the clarifier is that'll give us more info. But I don't get too many romantic vibes off of this. I do get a lot of support. I do get a lot of compassion and care. I do get definitely friendship, companionship. And it doesn't mean it has to be a friend. This could be a family member. This could be, you know, it's just someone who is very close to you. And there is a possibility. I don't, I think for most of you, this is someone you already know, but there is a possibility that this is someone new, right? So I just want to throw that out there. Most of you, I'm pretty sure you already know this person. Um, maybe not as well as this card implies. And again, I mean, because it kind of, it can grow and evolve. But the fact is this connection is beginning or starting or is going to be there through this process and through this ending. Part of this, I think, has doesn't really happen. And that's why I kind of say, like, although this is a soulmate connection, I don't think it's, it's at the intensity this card implies, because that can't happen until you kind of get through this hermit energy. This has to be sorted out first before we, we really get to see the full benefit of this. So it could evolve and turn into a romantic relationship. I wouldn't say it is now, so I don't think it's speaking to a, a, like a present lover or anything like that. I do think this is another connection coming in, and I can tell you why in just a minute. We're going to save that for later. Again with the roses. More roses. you got a lot of roses, my friends. All right, so the Hermit. Here we have the Ace of Pentacles. Wonderful. Wonderful. Aces are always a gift. It's always a blessing. And I think this is really alluding to the gift that spirit is trying to bring bring to you. Whether this is a, a gift about some type of opportunity, about what, what your next is, because that could totally be a thing. Um, I think this gift is going to be... Oh my god, I just had it and I saw my, my phone like blink on, so I got distracted. Um, to me, this Ace of Pentacles, yes, it is a gift for sure. I do think it's not only a gift of time, but I do think this is a gift of understanding. Those messages you're being sent, sent or downloaded, whether it's through dreams or through meditations, you know, depend, I don't know what, I don't know what you do with your time, but again, these messages that are coming through, I think that's the gift. I think that's the blessing that this card is really denoting, but it could be time and resources. Cause again, that makes, that makes this ending a new beginning easier, right? To have these resources available to help you as you make this shift. Then we have the Son of Wands coming up with the Ten of Swords. Very passionate, very impulsive card. Natural fire energy. You already do that incredibly well. That's your, your, your own vibe. This Son of Wands to me kind of speaks to that push and that drive. And it is, it is kind of leaning on impulse. Normally when this card comes up, I kind of, I always get the vibe to kind of, that's the dangerous side of this card is, you know, you could be moving too quickly or too hastily and not seeing everything. In this particular card, that's what I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize the impulse. Like if you get the hunch, take it. Like it can, and I say that knowing full well, it's a risky energy. I say that full well knowing that, and I'm still like, take the risk, take the risk. And I say that because this is coming out on this Ten of Swords, right? Because we already know that this, this perceived ending is coming, right? And for those of you this is connecting to, you you know what this is. If, you, if I say that and you're like, I don't, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. Then this part isn't for you. You can ignore this bit. But for most of you, 
this you already see coming. You know this is happening or you know this is something that you don't want forever. I want this to end. I don't want this to be my forever. You know what this is regardless. That's why I've, I'm leaning on the impulse here because this is what's getting you out. We're pushing beyond this. For others of you that have no idea what this is, then the impulse becomes sketch because we don't want to make a decision when, like, why are we going to leave something that we didn't know was bad? It, like, if you don't have a reason to leave, don't do it. So that type of impulse, yes, keep in check. But if you know the ship you're on is going to crash and burn, why, why wait any longer? Right? Right? Right. And again, I'm telling you take the risk. And here you have the card of victory, six of wands. This is, this is you flying out of the darkness, flying above, above these swords. And I know that the bottom of this card is wands, but doesn't it kind of look like, like, couldn't I just do that? And it looked like the swords, right? And here you are flying above it before you were getting crushed and trampled by it. And then you are reborn and fly above and rise above it all into the light. Like, I know you're going to make the right decision. I know you're going to make it through. But again, there's just that, that kind of shift. It's not even that big of a shift. It's just kind of figuring out what the next is and finding the inspiration to, you know, kind of claim it, own it, and go for it. And then here we have this Two of Cups being, you know, clarified by this Five of Pentacles. Meh, meh. If this is a relationship, if we're talking about a relationship for those of you out there, it's ending. You know it's ending. Like, you already have the hunch. Like, oh, things aren't 100%. Things aren't, you know, going so well. Because you've been feeling this. And it's, it's so... It can be kind of disheartening having, having this, this connection with this Two of Cups, but yet feeling so alone, feeling so unsupported, feeling so sad. Right? So if this is, if this is you, definitely a karmic relationship. So again, not a bad thing. Could it be twin flames, which makes it feel even stronger. But again, not all twin flames are the happily ever after. Sometimes it is, you know, a big major lesson and a karmic release that needs to be solved and resolved from, you know, past lifetimes, previous storylines, whatever it is. So for some of you, that's what's ending. You've reached the end of this, this karmic cycle. And again, that's only for some of you that are, that, you know, are in this relationship where, you know, you're, you're in this pairing, yet it feels like you're solo. That's who that's really for, right? You know, and then for others of you, and I would say this is more so my single Sages, my single Sages out there, if you're in a happy relationship where you're not feeling this, this almost probably means nothing to you. You can just kind of let this go. For my singles, to me, this lonely feeling is happening during this, this hermit energy, right? And even the hermit energy is super solo, but this is the, what we're talking about, the work that we're talking about, can only be done by yourself. It really it can only be done by yourself. So if, if you came to this reading hoping it was a love reading, this, no, like, no, it's not off the table, but it's it's on the far other end until this gets sorted out, all right? So I'm not going to embrace this lonely feeling, right? And I would almost throw in there, just as a little sprinkle, you probably feel this lonely feeling because on some levels, because you're a fire sign, it's a sign of spirit, you're, on some levels, you're probably already connected to this person, even though you're separated. Whether you knew them before or, or you don't even know them in this lifetime. That's probably why this Five of Pentacles feeling can be so strong in some of you. Because it's like, I know this person's out there. I, like, we're, on a spiritual level, we're already kind of vibing. Like, I already know they're out there. They already know I'm here. But we're still separated, so I feel even, it's even harder. I feel even lonelier, Right? And now you're telling me I, I have to be alone? Yes, you have to be alone, right? Because again, like how I said, it's karmic if it's in there. Sometimes it can be, we can, it can be postponed because it's karmic that we need time apart. Because again, there's only lessons we learn when we're apart. So for some of you, this could be karmic in the sense that you have to be separated. Lots of karmic stuff coming up in here. All right. All right, I'm going to pull... I'm gonna pull, let's do one more card. I'm gonna pull one more. I didn't do this for anyone, but I feel like this is heavy for a lot of you. So, oh, yep, 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 yep. Tower card. If this isn't Scream Karmic, I don't know what does. 
legit. So something has to fall, something has to burn down. This is what's keeping you guys apart. Now this could belong to you, this could belong to them. One of you has a tower moment upcoming. So for some of you, it could be you because we already have this 10 of swords. So, and it's funny because if this is you, if this is, if this tower card is, is symbolizing this 10 of, 10 of swords, you probably don't know it's coming. You probably don't because the tower moment normally comes unexpectedly like this, like this bolt of lightning. So some of you, you might just get this wake up call that just shocks you and it, it's going to be kind of shitty. I'm not going to lie. I love you and I want what's best for you, but it, this probably will be rough if you don't see it coming. Um, for others of you, this could be the other person. They're not ready for you. So they're, they're holding up the train. There's some type of big awakening and a big shakeup that has to happen on their end before they can fully, fully commit to this union, right? They're not ready. So one of you, maybe even both of you, maybe on two levels, you have to go through this, this kind of force ending and they have to get another shakeup of their own. But there's definitely some karmic stuff that needs to be untied before we, you know, come in, come back together in union. Which is why this is the moment to work on your own your own path, your own mission, your own journey through this lifetime. And again, I talked about it, but be gentle to yourself. I think even the card says choose peace somewhere. Yeah, let go of the need to be right and choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. So you're you're connected to healing. Don't try to force it because that's, you just have to choose, be peaceful. Don't try to force it because it's not possible. You can't force it. Accept the healing and accept the time to figure out what's going on with you. For some of you, this may directly have to do with your mother. You know, here we are talking about mother healing or this other person with their mother. So there may be some maternal issues that need to be resolved as well that could be linked to this karmic situation. Maybe you have the craziest mother mother-in-law ever. In, in your last lifetime and now we're now we're resolving it I don't know it's your journey but I'm just saying that's what's kind of going on so lots of healing going on we have an ending coming up possibly two for each of you lots of stuff going on but again there's just this shift and you kind of have to just allow this to unfold and allow it to happen because even though there may be some rough stuff coming up you still have the victory card here right? So even if something falls, it's to make way and to clear a path for your ultimate victory, right? So lots of trust. I would say, well, maybe not so much divine timing, but there are things happening in the divine that need to happen before some of this resolves itself. But again, victory is here, right? Victory is here once you make this decision. So the process that's going through is helping to get you prepared for this decision. Once that happens, you're golden. It may suck on the road there, but I promise it will be, it'll be worth it. It will be worth it. All right, Sag, I love you guys very much. I'm going to send you out. I am wishing you the best. Thank you as always for all your love and support. Uh, the new Timeless Tuesday reading went up yesterday. So if you haven't had a chance to see it, go check it out. Um, it's again, it's just a cool kind of new thing we're doing with the channel and you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Let me know if you are. Um, again, wishing you the best. Thank you as always. If you're not already, please hit subscribe down below wherever, wherever it is. It's somewhere down there. <laughs> um, so you can, and turn on the notifications so you can get all our updates when all the posts go up. Um, I will say some, uh, some of my friends have been getting their subscriptions late or want, like, they get a subscription, something was posted, but then they find out it was up two days ago. So notifications might be a little weird right now. Um, let's blame Mercury for that. Sure, why not? Um, but yeah, other than that, I am just wishing you the best, sending you my love. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye, Sag.